Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is a continuing series of lectures. This is lecture number 10. And the title of this lecture is To Be and to Exist. My host for this lecture is Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Hello and um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to, to talk, you know, at this moment of something very interesting, which is to be and to exist. What's the difference between both concepts? Many people, you know, many philosophical currents of thought uh, are convinced that they do mean the same. But in reality, according to Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic philosophy and Gnostic psychology, we have a different perception of the meaning of to be and to exist. So, in a few words, learning to be is harder than to exist. Many people also are convinced that there is a way to learn to exist better than other people. And it is true, you know, you see that the, nobody disagrees that it's better to have a good life than a, you know, a life where you are going to be suffering. And this is why most of people know already that having a good profession, you know, a decent lifestyle, you know, making decent money, creating a family that will live in comfort and not suffering. And of course, you know, a decent income, a buying a beautiful house, yeah, enjoying life the best possible way. And then after that, to get married, when people feel that they are ready for it, to bring children into the world and to enjoy parenthood. And later, you know, you retire, but it has to be a good retirement plan. And at the end, children, grandchildren will come through your own children. So it's an extension of our own life. And maybe some people will say, this is it, you know. I've been a winner, you know. I conquered the purpose of life. But this is to exist. So I would say learning to exist according to common ground, people's perception of reality. And those who who cannot reach those objectives, of course, suffer, you know, suffer poverty, you know, even hunger, all kind of tragedies that we can see in our world today. But what about learning to be? What is that? Is it the same thing? The answer is no. You know, Hamlet, remember Hamlet? William Shakespeare developed this beautiful play called Hamlet. And Hamlet, if we remember that, Hamlet had a conflict, a horrible drama in his life. He was the prince of Denmark, a man in a position of power. And his father died recently. His father had been assassinated. He discovered that. But the most horrible part of his discovery was that to know that his mother the widow or his father conspired with his uncle to kill his father. And of course, Hamlet was full of rage, extremely angry and even hating the world and hating himself, hating his mother, hating his uncle for the crime they, they committed. And now, he was facing a very sad reality before his eyes. So, and Shakespeare, in a brilliant, you know, perception of that drama, uh, portrays uh, Hamlet with a, a skull, a human skull on his hand, asking himself, to be or not to be? To be or to be not? That's the question, you know, this is what he said. And the situation is, you know, Shakespeare through the years, 500 years later, you know, this philosophical approach into reality develops more and more importance because it is real. 
It's showing our own reality, our own dramas, our own conflicts, our own tragedies. To be or to be not. So to be not means just to exist. To be or to exist. What's better, you know? And then there is a confusion about that because many people say, oh, I want to learn to be. I don't care about if I am poor, you know, I'll be begging on the street, but I'll be giving, you know, a spiritual counseling to people who are suffering, etc., etc. I'll, I'll become a beggar, but a spiritual beggar. Of course, you know, it sounds uh, very interesting, you know, maybe nicer, but it's not real. It's not realistic. It doesn't help. Would you respect a beggar speaking on the street who has no home, you know, and begging and getting money from people walking on the streets and giving you lectures about having a superior life? It'd be very hard, you know, to believe a person like that. So we need both, you know, learning to be and at the same time learning to exist, but connected, connected. What is that then? How do we learn to connect, to be and to exist? To be or to be not? The situation is that if we understand that there is a reality, you know, and this is another conflict today among intellectual individuals, even scientists, modern philosophers, you know, who say there is no one reality. There are as many realities as people exist on earth. It sounds very intelligent, you know, but is it really intelligent? What do we, if we say, according to Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic philosophy, Gnostic psychology, and even Gnostic cosmology, that there is one reality higher than all realities? We have spoken in the past about the absolute, remember that. You know, Albert Einstein spoke about relativity of time and space, but he never said, he never said that there was no absolute, that nothing was absolute. He never said that. At the contrary, Albert Einstein, the man of the millennium, according to Time magazine, he said that, you know, science without religion, lames, and religion without science is blind. It means we need both. We need both to apply religion and science into our lives, to have a superior kind of life. You see, so this is a more realistic approach. So to understand religion, religion is coming from Latin religare. It means reconnect, rejoin. What is that? Why reconnect? Why to reconnect? Why to rejoin? Isn't it because we are disconnected? You see? Disconnected from what? Well, disconnected from reality. <laughs> the reality of all realities is according to Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic psychology, Gnostic philosophy, and Gnostic cosmology. Pure science of the spirit is the absolute. Everything descended from the absolute. The universe was created from the absolute and at the end of a cosmic day, at the end of the life of a solar system, of a planet, or even a galaxy, everything returns to the absolute. We can say the absolute is a spiritual sun. You know, the Bible speaks about the star of Bethlehem, remember? When Jesus Christ was announced as coming, as a savior, according to Christianity and Catholicism, the star of Bethlehem is the absolute of our solar system. The star of Bethlehem then, a spiritual sun created the physical sun and created all solar system and life within every planet, including the sun. Because the solar system is a gigantic living organism composed of a spirit and matter, of course. And this is the meaning of the word God. God, in Latin, we say Deus. Deus, in Spanish, means two, number two. So number two is what? Spirit and matter. You see? 
So the absolute is number one. And number one is the foundation of life. So life descended from life. Life can only descend from life. So the absolute created what we call life. Created these two lines of life. To be and to exist. You see, the problem is we forgot how to be and we forgot how to exist properly at the same time because we disconnected from the reality. Nobody speaks about the absolute anymore or most of people, you know, have never even heard that concept of reality. And the absolute lives in our own heart. We are a little piece of the absolute. We are a spiritual beings. We have a body. We have a soul. We have a mind. We have emotions. We have a sexual life. But we are not the body, the mind, you see, and the rest. We are just a spiritual beings. We could say immortal spiritual beings. But we forgot to remember who we really are. To be. We forgot how to be 24 hours a day. This is why when we walk away from learning to be, we moved into existence just to exist, learning to exist. And because we disconnected from our real being, we could say God within ourselves, the divinity, our real being, we enter into fear because fear is the perception of the unknown. And this is why we develop the ego, the me, 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 me. I don't care about the others. I'm here to survive the survival instinct, which is animal psychology, of course. And that means because just to exist is an incomplete perception of reality, we make mistakes. And because of that, we create political systems that are also incomplete in their perception of reality. We suffer and we make others suffer because of our mistakes. You see the problem? Are we aware of that? Isn't it better to learn to be first, to be able to apply that conception of being into our existence? So in a few words, it's better to learn to be than just to learn to exist. Because when we really learn to be and we apply that psychology of being and we respect other beings, we'll be able to develop a superior kind of society, a true human society. The word human is coming from homo sapiens. In Latin it means the human with knowledge, the human who knows. Homo sapiens. What do we really know? Do we deserve to be called humans? With all respect, ladies and gentlemen, we don't. We don't. When we develop fear, because we walk away from the real reality of all realities, from learning to be, we enter into a fearful existence. Why do people jump into wars? Because of fear. Why do we see powerful individuals surrounded by bodyguards, heavily armed, because of fear? Why leaders of the world have to be protected? And they create armies and powerful supporters out of fear. We live in constant fear, 24 hours a day. And this is what we call ego. The same seven deadly sins of Christianity that we mentioned in other lectures, you know, the ego is coming from fear. It's coming from the divorce between our own matter and our own spirit. Because the mind is also matter. It's energy, and energy is also matter. But remember something very interesting. The word matter is a Latin word. It means mother, mother of the universe. The feminine aspect of the divinity the feminine aspect of reality, the body of the universe, the vehicle, you know, of the spirit. So the masculine aspect is the spirit or fire. The feminine aspect is 
water, or matter. Our organisms are made of water 80-90%. You see? And of course, water contains all kind of elements of nature within. So fire and water represent the divinity within ourselves. So because we have divorced from our inner being, we have divorced also from the inner reality of all realities. And then we stop being realistic. This is why we are in troubles. So then we can say there are two lines of life. The line of learning to be and the line of learning to exist. If we cross those two lines, we could say that the lines that's vertical is the line of learning to be. And the line of learning to exist is the horizontal. As we said, everybody is walking the horizontal line, the horizontal path. But we have ignored for centuries, for entire generations, the vertical line. And the Bible mentioned that, you know, is the same Jacob's ladder, remember? The ladder to heaven. So the spiritual, the spiritual line, the vertical line, and the horizontal line is the material, the materialistic, you see, perception of reality that we all have to walk. The problem is spiritual philosophers who ignore matter, materialistic approach into reality, they make a big mistake. And same thing happens with materialistic philosophies, like Marxist Leninist ideas, because they are incomplete. We need both to be realistic, because we are composed of both. We are spiritual beings, and we have a body, we have a mind, you see, we have a soul. So, and the universe is composed of the same elements. So, to be realistic, we have to learn to connect the two lines. But the trouble is, when people only care about learning to exist, having a good life, and they ignore the line of learning to be, we commit, and I include myself, we commit all kinds of atrocities with ourselves and with the others. We end abusing ourselves and we end abusing others because we enter into fear. We live in constant fear. And of course, the survival instinct, which is purely animal, takes control of our mind, our soul, and our lives. And of course, we suffer because we create only enemies, you see, and there is no small enemy. We all know that. A small enemy can destroy us. And allow me to talk about something, you know, a little bit more complicated today. Just a few hours ago, there was a horrible earthquake and tsunami in Japan. A year ago, there was another powerful earthquake and tsunami in Chile. 8.8 .8 in Chile, 8.9 in Japan. The most horrible, horrendous catastrophe that Japanese people have experienced in a century. And of course, our compassion, you know, we share the pain, or at least we try to share the pain of those who are suffering and of those who disappeared that have left a memory, a painful memory in their relatives and friends. But on the other side, there is a connection between all of this. There is a connection. You know, when we have troubles at home, have you noticed that when a husband and a wife are fighting all the time and they make their children suffer and there is an imbalance of emotions within a family group, all inner plants, the plants that people enjoy having at home, die. Are you aware of that? Why do they die? Because our emotional waves travel within space and time and kill those creations of nature because plants are alive. That's exactly what's happening in our planet Earth. 
we have destroyed the environment of, on Earth because we forgot to be. We continue only caring about learning to exist, having no respect for Mother Nature, ignoring that we are a tiny little piece of nature. We are a tiny little piece of nature. And we are a tiny little piece of the spirit, of the universal spirit of life. We are both, you see? So the only way to have a successful life, to become true humans, real homo sapiens, people who know, humans who are knowledgeable, intelligent individuals, intelligent human society that have learned to live in peace, is by learning to be and learning to exist simultaneously, but taking primordial importance to learning to be. Because this is what we are, learning to discover, rediscover who we really are. And when we do that, we learn to respect Mother Nature because we become aware that we're a, a tiny little piece of nature. Do you know what we have done to ourselves? Do you know what we have done to Mother Nature? We are supposed to be a friendly bacteria of this gigantic living organism called planet Earth. And instead of that, we became a virus. And of course, a living organism doesn't like viruses. This is what happened to our own organism. When we develop a virus, what do we do? We struggle to wipe out that virus from our bodies. Of course, this is the only way. And this is exactly what's happening to us today. Respectfully, respectfully to all those who are suffering. I've been in Chile recently. I've been visiting the locations of the earthquake. People are still terrified. And the trouble is most of people don't realize. People don't realize that we are living a wrong life. We, we don't realize that we have to learn to live because our institutions have become deviated from reality. And you know, all religions speak about love. Well, that's a moment of truth that we have to incorporate in our lives 24 hours a day. Learning to love means learning to be and learning to exist simultaneously, but never ignoring neither one of life because both have to work together. The problem is if we create that cross, the vertical line of learning to be and the horizontal line of learning to exist, you know, there we can measure. This is a perfect measurement of our reality, our inner reality. What's my level? What's my real level of being? What is it? You see? It's easier to discover that when we analyze who are our friends, our connections. If we are alcoholic, you see, we enjoy going to bars and getting drunk frequently with our friends who do the same thing. This is our level of being. If we enjoy committing crimes, of course, we will meet people who enjoy doing the same thing. If people are unfaithful in their relationships, of course, we will meet people who are doing exactly the same thing. We are invited to an orgy. Oh, well, let's go for it. Why not? Let's enjoy life, you know. And at the end, we get, you know, a venereal disease or even AIDS. And we are crying because we made a mistake. We forgot how to be. We only care about to exist. Existence. And of course, the time has come to remember William Shakespeare's brilliant, intelligent words through this character called Hamlet, to be or to be not, learning to be, or just learning to exist. That's the question, that's the big question. And also, matter or mother nature is also a manifestation of the universal spirit of life descending from the absolute. So we should never think that God is only masculine. 
the divinity is masculine and feminine, both. So we have to learn to have deep respect for our spiritual inner being and also for our matter, respect for our bodies, our minds. Are you familiar with Konstantin Stanislavski? He was a Russian genius that lived a hundred years ago. In Moscow, he developed the theater of the fine arts. And because of political conflicts in his country, he moved to France and also traveled all over Europe, teaching his uh, called Stanislavski method. His inspiration came from William Shakespeare. And before William Shakespeare, from the ancient Greek theater. Now, Konstantin Stanislavski, according to my perception, he was a Gnostic. He practiced a Gnostic philosophy. You know, when he was questioned about the, his way of life, what's your perception about life? How would you describe yourself in one sentence? The answer from Konstantin Stanislavski was, the Lord, it means God, the Lord gave me my talent. And Apollo, that Greek God, gave me my inspiration. So there, you know, we can understand better where his fountain of inspiration came from, from ancient Greeks. But also William Shakespeare, that lived only 500 years ago, and the ancient Greeks lived thousands of, of years ago, before the Roman Empire. So there we can see that William Shakespeare was also influenced by the ancient Greeks. What's the beauty about the, the ancient Greek theater? You know, theater for them, not only theater, all arts, all arts, not only dramatic arts, but all art, music, you know, painting, drawing, you know, etc. They were a way of perceiving reality while in the process of awakening our consciousness. Consciousness means also our soul, our degree of perception of reality, which is exactly the same approach into the vertical line and the horizontal line. Where is our level of being? So my level of being, if I am an alcoholic, that's my level of being, you know. My degree of consciousness is, oh yeah, let's be happy, you know, let's get drunk every day. I want to experience, you know, pleasure. And this is it. This is my degree, my poor level of consciousness, because eventually I will cook my liver and I will die before my time. So I'm killing myself, you know, I'm committing suicide slowly without realizing it. But this is my poor level of being. I say, I say poor because there are better ways of, you know, existence. If we drink with moderation, it doesn't mean we have to walk away from alcohol 100%, but don't cook our liver, my friend. Why do we have to kill ourselves, you know? You see the point? So essentially, awakening our consciousness means exactly that. Our level of being means that when Mother Teresa was helping the poor all over the world and that woman sacrificed constantly her life to help others, portraying, you know, the power of love, but crystallized in that tiny little lady because she had a very small frame, you know, that woman made a difference, not only connected with all women of the world, but also even nuns. You could see that there are not many nuns that live this kind of superior kind of life, you know. And this lady, she was healing people, not only physical, but also psychologically. And at the same time, she was taking the pain out of many people. But at the same time, she always seemed so relaxed, so peaceful, because she had learned to walk the vertical line. You see, she was in touch with her real being. 
she understood the purpose of life, that we cannot exist without learning to be first, because it's better to learn to be than just only to exist. What about many others, you know? What about the founders of all religions? The founders of all religions, Jesus Christ, Moses, Buddha, Krishna, Hermes Trismegistus in ancient Egypt. All these superior individuals, they made a difference. Because not only they lived in accordance with learning to be, but they also were teaching others. This is why they had the power to create religions. They made history. Even if many people don't agree with that, but we cannot deny their importance, how they have influenced the world, and how today they have proven that our way of life in our modern times has become so twisted. Not only we became very ill by only existing, but also we made our planet Earth very, very ill. So, coming back into Stanislavski, who learned from Shakespeare and before from the ancient Greeks, let me tell you what I learned, you know, from Konstantin Stanislavski, through him entering into, you know, the knowledge of dramatic arts. You know, the actors, the Greek theater thousands of years ago consisted in performing a play based on reality, the reality of the actors, the performers. For example, you know, one of the actors was telling his own personal experiences. His wife had passed away and he ended crying because he was confessing his mistakes to the audience, but simultaneously to the divinity that lived within himself and also within the universe confessing to the Holy Spirit within and to Mother Nature, the feminine aspect of God, saying, God, you know, my wife is gone and I miss her so much. And I never told her that I love her. Why didn't I do it? Why didn't I do it? Why was I so stupid, so ignorant, so cruel with her? And now she's gone. And the only thing I, f I feel like doing is to cry like a child because I'm repented. And of course, the audience were listening and the audience was also interrelating themselves with the confession of this performer, these actors. You see, other people were telling also their good things, describing their qualities, what they learned from reality. In a few words, how much they have learned to be, and others just how much they have learned to exist. You see the difference? And that ancient knowledge, you know, because the ancient Greeks, they developed the concept of gnosis. Gnosis, knowing reality. From a scientific point of view, a philosophical point of view, an artistic point of view, and a mystical point of view. So then the act of performing a drama became a confession. Now, isn't it what we all do when we write a book, when we speak to other people? The only problem is, listen to this carefully, that we have learned to lie because when you walk away from learning to be, we learn to exist in a twisted manner. Fear makes us to behave like monsters, me, 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 without caring about the others. And of course, instead of telling the truth, instead of confessing my sins, what I do, I applaud my mistakes. I lie to myself and I lie to the world. And of course, I lie to God. But can I lie to God just like this? Of course not. This is why, dear... Ladies and gentlemen, with all respect, we're suffering and we make others suffer. We create earthquakes and tsunamis, even if it is a horrible way of trying to rediscover the cause of many causes. The ego 
has become the me, 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 me. The seven deadly sins have become a psychological illness. And we are all very ill, and we made our planet Earth very ill. So the only way out is learning to be. When we learn to be, we have to remember that our cosmic laws, divine laws, we have to act in accordance with the law. And the highest law of all laws is love. Learning to love. But if we have the ego within, how can we love? Love is giving without conditions. According to Jesus Christ, is being able to give even our lives for those we love. According to Samael Onveor, the founder of the School of Gnostic Anthropology, it's exactly what Jesus Christ did, given our last drop of blood for those we love. And when we eliminate the ego, the me, 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 we really learn to love. Because love is wisdom. Only wise people have learned to love. Love is consciousness. It means we have a soul. Soul is the opposite of ego. Ego means subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious. Soul means consciousness. Awakening to the real reality, which is the absolute. And the absolute is the divinity itself. The absolute is wisdom, consciousness, and love. So, isn't it better to learn to be than just learning to exist while ignoring learning to be? Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. You have been listening to E. Jim G. Ross. This is lecture number 10, Gnostic Lectures. The website is rickyradio.com. The title of this lecture, To Be and To Exist.